What's up guys, I've been using Emergence AI for a while now and in today's video I'll give you all the upsides and downsides of using Emergent AI. If you do want to try Emergent AI make sure to do so with the link below. Now before we get started, I want you to understand that Emergent AI is an AI native development environment that uses multiple AI agents to automatically generate, test and deploy full stack web and mobile applications from natural language prompts. Now, it's part of a class of tools known as Vibe Coding or agent-based development uh, platforms that aim to automate the entire software development cycle. So basically, it allows non-technical founders to be able to create applications without necessarily having knowledge about coding. And to get started, what I want you to do is go to Google and search Emergent AI. And we're going to click on this prompt. Once loaded, this is what it's going to look like and you're going to click here to sign in or you're going to click here to create a new account with Google, GitHub, Apple account or you can sign up with an email. Now once you're signed up, this is what it's going to look like. Um, before we get started, I'd like to encourage you to ensure that you have credit in your account so you can purchase credits. Else. Emergent AI will actually not allow you to do anything. You're going to get errors when you're starting to build. Anything you do with Emergent AI, <laughs> you're going to have to do with credit. Now, from first glance, you can see that you have a button to attach images or files. You have a button to attach your GitHub account. You have this here to choose the type of agents that you want. There's one for stable and thorough. There's fast and flexible. There's front-end apps only. And there's agents for mobile apps. Stable and thorough is the one we're going to be using today, but if you'd like to just build front-end applications, you can use this for a prototype and you can use this for mobile applications. And fast and flexible is usually for prompts that you need fast responses to. Now this option here is for pro members and team members. It gives you ultra thinking and it's more for advanced level of prompts. Now here you have the option to choose whichever LLM that you want to use. You can use Claude, you can use GPT-5. And here under advanced controls, you can choose which MCP to use. You have your memory MCP, you have your Superbase MCP, and you have your Notion MCP. Now an MCP is a model context protocol. And it's just a standardized way for AI agents to securely and efficiently access external tools like data from databases and APIs. And it acts as a universal adapter or universal tool belt that provides AI agents with the necessary context and structure to understand and use these external resources without developers having to create custom integration for each one of them. So as a non-technical person, just leave it as is. We're going to leave the template as is and we already have credits and here we can either choose to make it public or private. But with the public version, it's more of the free version for uh, Emergent AI. The private version is a paid version and nobody can access your repo. To efficiently show you how Emergent AI works, simple web application. ingredient uses an LLM to suggest recipes with steps and nutrition include a simple UI with input form and output display. Now in the bid for the AI agents to fully understand our preference, it's going to ask you some questions like the LLM integration. You're going to choose, you're going to confirm or choose whichever AI LLM model you want to use. I prefer Google, uh, OpenAI, but you can use Claude, you can use Gemini. So I answered, I said OpenAI. And for the second question, it asks what should be included in the recipes. Basic version, you have the advanced version, and then you have extra. So um, I choose the basic version with this. You can choose to add advanced version. And for the third question, it asks for the user authentication. Uh, I don't need a user authentication, but what this basically does for the A is that it allows the uh, it allows the AI agents to create an application 
that uses JWT, that's a JSON web token, to create a username and a password for you, and that's very secure. So if you need a secure application, you should choose this. This is an emergent Google social login where you can click on an icon that lets you log in with Google or it says C is not required. I don't require it. And for the last one, it's a UI style preference. So we're going to click on enter and see what it comes with. It's creating the back end with uh, Python. And here you can roll back and tell the agent to stop creating this if you have a preferred uh, stack or language that you want to use. It says, what's in your kitchen? List your ingredients and let AI create delicious recipe for you. So you see the AI agent recognizes that there's an error and it realizes that the recipe didn't generate. So it's going to check the backend logs to see what happened and then correct the error. And once you click here, you can see that the error is here also. Just like that, we have our chicken and rice with sauce. Based on your ingredients, rice, chicken, and sauce, we have ingredients, one cup of rice, two cups of water, one tablespoon olive oil, two chicken breasts. And it shows you the cooking steps. And from there, it shows you the nutritional information, just like we asked, we asked it to do. And yeah, it prompts that the app is working beautifully. I can see that the recipe being generated with ingredients and cooking steps. Let me verify the nutrition information is also displayed by scrolling down a bit more. So it says the page has been reset. Let me check the database to see if recipes are being saved. And it's telling you all of its process. Now, once that's done, it's going to give you the basic information. But this is more like a readme for the application. And now you have the option to either deploy or preview. And this is the preview. Now if you want to see your code, what you can do is click here. And you can see the link and the password. You're going to copy the password and you can open in browser. And once that's open, you're going to paste your password and submit. Now if you're non-technical, you might not understand all of this. But it has a front-end folder and it has a back-end folder. And this is the... Um, code base that you can copy and give to a developer in the future for improvements or if you'd like to you know keep it and ask the AI agent to improve for the future you're gonna keep this it has all of the files that it created we're not gonna deploy this app just yet because we might have some changes but once you want to deploy you want to make your app public you're gonna click here and people are gonna be it's gonna provide you with an with a link that people are going to be able to access your application with. As you can see, it ended at 4.39 p.m. And it started at 4.29 p.m. So this all of this process took a total of 10 minutes. And that's how easy it was to create an app on Emergent AI. Bear in mind, this is a simple app and to create more technical apps you might need it might take more time but this is how easy it is now for my final take on emergent ai um the fact that it turns ideas into functional tools effortlessly it empowers anyone to create practical solutions and um that's that's a plus for me that's a hundred percent for me aside the fact that it requires you to pay for almost everything this works for me and if you find this video helpful please don't forget to like and subscribe on to the next one. See ya.